You're joking. I'm afraid not. I'm the new investor. You're Leo's client? Well, don't blame Leo. He didn't know it was me. He thought I was a man. Boy, was I, he wrong. <laughs> I told you to stay out of my personal affairs. And I told you that I want in on every part of your life. Thanks to a hefty check from my trust, we are now connected from bed to business. Yep, you and Leo don't even have to whisper around me anymore. I can be in on every dirty little thing that goes on. You may wear my ring and have a fat bank balance, but you don't control me. Guess the honeymoon's over. <laughs> Let's go. Daddy? Bill? Here. Mary what? has what? something to what? tell what? you. What? What? Well, it's good news. Good. Um, we're getting married at the end of the week. Oh, darling, you worked it out. Oh, I'm so pleased. Congratulations, Matt. Thanks, Henry, for everything. <laughs> oh, but darling, you can't get married at the end of the week. What do you mean, we can't get married at the end of the week? Well, we don't have time to plan the wedding. It doesn't matter. That's the most wonderful part of it. We don't have to lift a finger. Bridget's got it all planned, everything. Mm -hmm. Matt's gonna kill me. Well, whatever you've done, it can't be that bad. Oh, wanna bet? I took his word that, he, that his wedding was canceled, and so I canceled the wedding, and now I have to reschedule an entire wedding before tomorrow. Oh, no. no. Oh, yes. You know, I hang in there. We'll think of something. Oh, well, I told her that, and she yelled at me. I did not. Okay, okay. Okay, we just have to call Matt and tell him what happened. He'll understand. And look, <coughs> Vanessa's rich. We can just, she can just have a wedding flown in from somewhere, right? Right? Over my dead body. Well, there's a good gift idea. Now, listen, we don't need Matt upset, and we certainly don't need Vanessa's money. What we need is a plan. You know, I have planned parties for princes. I, <laughs> I once planned a hurricane evacuation. I can plan a fun wedding, one that Matt and Vanessa will never, ever forget. That's what I'm afraid of. I was looking for you, Annie. Josh. Obviously, Rick found you first. I don't think I need this right now. This isn't the time or place to make a scene. I have no intention of making a scene. Why are you here? Actually, Rick, that's none of your business. There's nothing left to say, is there? Annie, if you just give me a chance, just hear me out. That's all I ask. It's up to you, Annie. Five minutes, please. Okay. that you want. Be careful. You must not go too fast. Look, I am strong as a bull, so don't treat me like <laughs> I'm some kind of invalid. You are still recuperating. We will take a slow walk around, and then it's back to bed. I'll let that double entendre pass given where we are. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything more beautiful? Yes. I will let that double entendre pass as well. You hate her. True. But I love you, and I love Matt, and you promised Vanessa the wedding of her dream in a Reardon does not break her promise, or I'll have to throw myself into a pit of burning coals. Now there's a thought. Nola, just promise me that you're not going to do anything to embarrass us or her. Or I'd like to make her walk down the aisle over hot coals. Do you honestly something? think that I am that childish or that petty? Okay, fine. Plan B. 
All right. What do we need? Food. What else? Music. Music. Yeah. What if the Gershkin brothers oh, still play dual accordion? A tuxedo <laughs> for Matt. Tuxedo. Invitation. Chalk. Oh, oh, darn it. Chalk. More chalk. chalk. More help. Leave that to me. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here, 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 here. Okay. Oh, thanks. There's no way that we're going to be able to get invitations printed Ready? up and sent out in time. Bullhorn. Be serious. <laughs> I was just wondering, um, Gilly, do you think that... Gilly. Oh, I'm sorry. It's I'm okay. Sorry. Um, do you think that you could announce the guest list live on television? Roger really hates that when I do that. Oh. Give me the list. I'll make the phone calls. Oh, oh, guest list. Here, here, here. Double check it out. Right. Make sure I got everything. Minister, you know, we really should call Father Brennan and reserve St. Mary's. No, no, no. They want to be married mm -hmm. in the gazebo in the park. Oh, well, we still have to call Father Brennan. I mean... No, no, no. They want to use Vanessa's minister, Reverend Miller... Oh, yeah, and would you write down, please, um, I have to re-reserve the, the cancellation of the gazebo. Mm -hmm. I've got to... Well, you better this. call before it's booked, you know. Yeah, but, you know, i got time to do that. <laughs> Who'd want a gazebo on a weekday? You know, well, I'm just wondering why Vanessa would want to get married in that pigeon palace. Don't start. On second thought, it really is perfect. I mean, Vanessa's track record with men is for the birds. Hey! Oh. <laughs> right. I, I, I hope that Hawk didn't hear that cork pop, or he'll be coming downstairs to pass the champagne. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm listening. Huh. You haven't said anything. Do you feel all right about this? Yes, yeah, no big deal. And people get married all the time. And divorced. Let's, uh, let's you and I walk outside for a second. What do you say? No, I'm okay right here. Now, Bill, manners. This whole wedding thing thrown you off guard, has it? I don't care when you guys get married. Sure you do. Me being your mom's boyfriend and me being your stepfather are two different things. I said I don't care. Look, Billy, I know what it's like to be jerked around by adults. Your mom and I don't want to rock the boat. Well, then I guess moving into your room at the boarding house is out of the question, huh? Well, we haven't exactly worked out the living arrangements, but no, you're not going to be stuck on some cot at the boarding house. Well, I'm glad that's settled. Let me know what you and Mom decide to do. Whatever we decide to do, we're all going to decide together. We're going to be a family now. Whatever you say. Your mom needs your support now more than ever. You know that, don't you? Yeah, because Dinah blew her off and married Roger Thorpe. That's right. She feels like she's lost her daughter, and she sure as hell doesn't want to lose you. Well, I don't smoke, I don't drink, and I'm not in love with an older woman. So tell Mom to chill. Why don't you tell her? Well, it doesn't matter what I think. I mean, Mom's marrying you, and that's that. Look, I, I'm not trying to take the place of your father. I'm <laughs> good, because you can't. I know that. You know, I envy you. Yeah, right. No, I do. I mean, the way you look up to your old man, respect you have for him, love. Hell, if I could just like my old man, I'd be happy. I guess you and your dad don't get along, huh? We never have. So you hold on to what you have with your father. I just want to be your friend. That's it? That's all you want? One more thing. Yeah, I knew there'd be a catch. It's a big one, too. I want you to be my best man. You serious? Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. For mom's sake. I'm glad. Your mom will be too. Over there is our blacksmith shop. In the house next to it, he lives in with his mother and brother. His wife died last year. This gray building here is our meeting house where we gather once a day for prayer. And next to it is the general store. The people who run it are very kind. And that's Abigail's house. She and her parents have become like my own family. You uh, are very happy here, aren't you? It has become my whole world. Well, it's a rather small world. It is enough for me. When I first found this place, I was bone weary totally lost no friends no one i could turn to for help i was as close to despair as i must have been that day i drove off that bridge mm. and then 
I turned that bend in the road up there. I came around the corner, and this is what I saw. A blacksmith shop and a general store. In the Bible, Goshen is a name for the promised land. Is this your promised land? It has become so for me. It has everything I've ever wanted. Everything I need. Peace, tranquility, kindness, goodness, hope. Love? What about love? Josh, you want to talk, so talk. This was delivered to my house today. Brass ring to our care. To let carousel. I forgot about this. I bought it at a salvage store the day you wanted to elope. Guess this one's a defect. It was a very sweet gesture. Hey, you bought the house. You keep it. No, actually, I would like you to have it. Just what I need. A reminder of a relationship gone bad. I'll put it next to my 12-step book. No, come on, Annie. I didn't come here to upset you. Well, Josh, okay? instead of throwing wanted... it into my face, why don't you just throw it away? Annie! Josh, Annie. admit it. You don't want anything around that reminds you of me. I'm surprised you didn't come in here with a box full of my stuff. Hey, let's see. You know, there was that picture in the den of me and, and the lingerie you bought for me on the top shelf of your closet. Come on, You Annie, know, you don't, don't want any traces of it, me okay? in... This is not what I wanted. Really? Then what is it that you want? I want, um... What do you want, Josh? I, I what want, are you trying to I, say? I, I'm sorry that the brass ring have set you. And I want to apologize to you again for accusing you of using Mara. I talked to her, and she told me all about the, the cab ride and wanting to see you and trying to do everything she can to get the two of us back together. Well, I told you that before, and you didn't yeah, believe I, me. I was wrong, all right? And I'm sorry. I know you didn't use her to get to me. You, you, you told her the truth, and I appreciate that. Well, Mara and Shane mean the world to me. I want them to get through this with as few tears as possible. Well, that's not going to be easy for them, especially for Mara. She's Mar been pretty down ever since we split up. Mara will be fine. I mean, she has you and the Chamberlains to love her. Even Hawk in his own misguided way. Annie, the kids need you. They'll be fine. It doesn't have to be like this. Josh, it we does. both know no, that no, no. it I've does. Been, I've been thinking about this, and if you would like to see the kids, that of, would be okay with of me. Of course it, it I be... do. I'd love to take him to the park, maybe catch a movie. I'd love to help Mara with her homework sometimes. I think we have to be careful, though, too. I... Mara's still confused as to why we split up. So is Shane. And I, I don't want them thinking that because you're back in their lives, you're also back in my life. You, Do you understand that? You came in here to thank me for being so honest with Mara, and then in the next breath, you warn me not to lie to them? What's no, wrong just, with you? I just you? don't want there to be any misunderstanding. Don't worry, Josh. It's perfectly clear. You and I are through. You will not and you cannot um, forgive me for being less no, than perfect. On. I didn't come here to you go know, through all this stuff with you. You said to me that I didn't love you enough to tell you about Rick and my drinking. Well, maybe that's not it. Maybe you didn't love me enough to hear the truth. Maybe you didn't love me at all. So when we got the food on the list here, I thought of you. You'd be great for this. No, thanks, David. We'll be happy to help. Yeah, okay. Great. Good. Bridget's gonna give you more of the specifics, so um, let me go find her. Great, okay. okay. This reminds me of weddings in Crete. Everyone pitches in. Helene, I don't have time to help plan a wedding, especially Vanessa's. Nadine, what else do you have to do? I mean, Carol left town, business at the diner slow. Thanks for reminding me. Well, you spend all your time reading tarot cards and driving Buzz crazy. I have to figure out what this vision of mine means. Nadine, come on, not this again. I saw it just as clear as day, Eleni, this bloody candlestick slicing through the air. It means somebody is gonna die. The question is who? 
Oh, thank you, you guys. Thanks oh, for coming. I really sure. appreciate it. So, David sure. said that you would help oh, with Matt and Vanessa's wedding? We'd be glad to. Yeah. I hope Vanessa chokes on a cheese puff. Oh, I like you. And you? Yeah. Honey, you have a very interesting aura. Oh. Nadine thinks she's psychic. Really? I had my first real psychic vision last night. Ooh. I had a vision, too, of Matt chasing me with a jackhammer if anything was wrong. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Bridget, just relax. I have everything under control. David, you know, we need some men from Lewis Construction to do some heavy lifting. Oh, what's the lift? Well, a chair, a table, a tree or two, but don't tell him that. And, Jilly, mm -hmm. do you think that you could do some dialing now? <laughs> I'm on my way, okay? Great. <laughs> what would you like us to make? We can make sandwiches, pastries, Greek specialties? Oh, I don't know. Anything that goes well with Thai food. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. We're having a wedding, not a food fair? I am making a special dish from Bangkok. Great. Does it include house pets? <laughs> Bridget. No, not this one. So, hors d'oeuvres and we'll be perfect. Great. Well, I'll make a list of what's on hand at company as far as chafing dishes and plates, and we'll get the rest from the diner. So come on, Nadine. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot, Elaine. You know how she'll be ruined my nail. You know, Matt's wedding is just going to be unforgettable. Oh, just like mine was. You know, it was so great. Maureen and I were just panicked about my dress, and, and your grandma was running around here <laughs> like a chicken with her head cut off, and Tony was being Tony, and it was just... Oh, I was marrying the man of my dreams. And those dreams end. Oh, well. I just hope Vanessa doesn't ruin Matt's dreams. Oh, Bill and Matt have been out there an awfully long time. Now, darling, if anything had gone wrong, one or both of them would have been in here by now. Well, I hope so. Well, you're well on your way to becoming Mrs. Matthew Reardon. Yes. <laughs> oh, thanks to you in large part. Mm -hmm. So lucky to have you for my daddy. Oh, nope, I'm the lucky one. And I'm so glad to see you looking happy again. Now listen, you're not going to balk at giving me away again, Oh, darling, why should I have done it before? <laughs> but we mustn't make a habit of this. Let this be the last time, right? Oh, oh, I just remembered. H.P. called this morning from Cornwall. He did? Yeah. He wants to send his best to you and your, his love, you yeah. know. Oh, oh. And obviously, England has gotten to him. He said, and I quote, I'm having a jolly good time here. H.B. <laughs> <laughs> said that? <laughs> oh, I miss him. I miss him. You know, you always expected Billy and me to get back together again, but... Well, darling, he must know. Billy's your past. Matt's your future. Yes. Yes, he is. Darling, what's troubling you? Oh, nothing really. I, I was just thinking about Dinah and wondering about what the future has in store for her and if she really knows that I'll always stand by her no matter what. Anyway, I... I, I I've given up on that. I'm not going to try and control her or, or control anything. I'm, I'm just going to live my life and try and have a good time. And I, I hope that Dinah does the same. This is the thanks I get for bailing you out? Bailing me? I want to speak to Leo Flynn. My sources tell me that your cash flow slowed to a trickle when you paid Sam McCullers up front for those oil leases. Your sources are full of it. That's why you're so desperate for investors, isn't it? You need a boatload of bucks to keep WSPR from sinking. Bull. What, it's not a good investment? WSPR is a gold mine. Then don't give me the shaft. You take my money or I'll take it to Spalding. Oh. You know, I am sure that Alexandra would just love to have Roger Thorpe's wife on board. Yeah, well, maybe, but I won't allow it. I don't need your permission to write checks. I don't need your permission for anything. Oh, really? Guess again. You are now my wife. I have every right to know what you do. Ah! Does the term double standard mean anything oh, to you? Oh, please! Bag the feminism on you. It's a joke. Don't keep secrets from me, Roger. The less you know about my business affairs, the better off you are. And that is to protect you. No, you just want to keep me in the dark. And let me tell you, you are going to be laughing all alone at night unless you get it through your thick, chauvinist head that I am every bit your equal. Our marriage is a 50-50 partnership. Now you take it or leave it. Why do you want to horn in on my life? Come on, go to lunch, go shopping, go to hell. I'd rather go someplace else with you. 
Okay, just cut it out. <laughs> come, on, come on, Roger. Come on. Now you're the best. That's why I want to invest with you. I can make your dreams come true. <laughs> come on. Say we have a deal. More like a merger. Guiding light in a moment. understand why Goshen has become my home for the rest of my life. Does it not take your breath away? It's extraordinary. You know, God must have worked long and hard to create this. This place has meaning and order. Nature leads and we follow the way God intended it to be. I am at peace. How can you be? I mean, you're much more than just brewing tea for someone when they sneeze. My life here is valuable to the community and to me. Your life, the gift you were given, was not about saving lives. It's about living life. And anyone who was lucky enough to go along with you is in for the ride of his life. I am wise to you, and I will not be tempted. No, oh, but it's true. I mean, you're not about bonnets and buggies. No, you're about sequins and sass. You're vibrant all the way down to your fingertips. You're bigger than this place. Much bigger than life. According to Buzz Cooper, you are bigger than life, too. And yet you ended up here. Take a hint, Mr. Spalding. I ended up here because you can't drive a buggy and horse worth a damn. God has a plan for you, as he does for me. Do you think this is your fate? My destiny. Well, then tell me this. My coming here and being run over by you, was that an accident? Or is it my destiny to be here with you? Didn't love you? Annie, excuse me here, but I loved you with all my heart and soul. I asked you to be my wife. I wanted you to be the mother of my children. You wanted me to be perfect. And when you found out no. that I wasn't, no. it was adios, Annie. No, if you had just been upfront with me in the first place... You know, place, I was afraid to tell you the truth because I thought you would leave me. And you know what? I was right. You didn't love me enough. You didn't love me enough to forgive me. And if you want me to stand here and make you feel better about dumping me, make you tell you that I was a lush and that you were right, well, forget it. That's not what I want. Well, then what is it? I, tell me. I don't know what I want, all right? I, I want to understand what happened to us. I'll tell you what happened. I lied. I made a mistake. And you refused to forgive no. me. I'll be damned if I'm going to stand here and let you get away with that. Hey, 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 hey. It's enough. People can hear you all through the hospital. I think it's time for you to leave. I've got work to do, Annie. I'm sorry. Are you all right? Idea. Leave town while we still can. No, no. What? How to get Matt and Vanessa to and from the park. Oh, 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 Henry said that we could use the Bentley for that. Fire truck. Crazy. I rode one to my wedding. I rest my case. Oh, you know, 
And the nicest fireman drove me. What was his name? Chief, Chief Gon, Gondolfo. I bet he'll give us the whole fleet. Look, my brother probably was not going to want to ride to him from his wedding in a fire truck. You have no sense of style. No, just one of impending doom. Your brother <laughs> is just a big boy. All boys love trucks. It gets really scary when they think they're making sense. Well, at least the food is under control. Excuse me? What are you saying to me? I mean, you're, you're, you're trying to make hors d'oeuvres stick with a dish that nobody out of t outside of Thailand has ever heard of. I mean, what are the chances that this thing's going to be a taste sensation? Oh, don't you worry, honey. I have not had any visions of any deaths from food. Well, there's a small consolation, but then again, it is something. And at this point, I'll take it. <laughs> Pretty lady. I got good news. What? The guys will be glad to help any way you need them. Yes. Oh, good. And if they uh, ask for free beer, it's only because I promised it to them. Why did you do that? Uh, well, you know, they like Matt and all, but no heavy lifting, no beer. They don't go together. So you're telling you. me that we're going to have a bunch of drunk construction guys at the wedding? Possibly. Excellent. Boy, this is good news. OK, wonder what else can go wrong. <laughs> well, it's all set. Oh, brace yourselves. Not only are they going to let us use the fire department parade limo, but Chief Gondolfo is arranging for a police escort from the park back here after the service. The gazebo, I forgot to re-reserve the gazebo. Oh, this wedding, it's just going to be awesome. Eyes will be popping, jaws will be dropping. I can't wait to see the look on Vanessa's face. <laughs> to Bill. My best man. Uh. Well, thank goodness I don't have to get married without my son there. Mm. What in the world would... Mm. Josh, hey, come on in. We have something nice to tell you. Uh, what is it? What's wrong? I just didn't know anybody was home, that's all. Oh, come on in. Come on in. Uh, we're toasting Vanessa's and Matt's. Imminent nuptials. Come on, Joy. Uh, no, no, thank you. I, uh, I appreciate it. Congratulations. I'm just going to be upstairs. Thanks. Hey, 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 hey. Wait a minute. What is it? Nothing. Really, I'm fine, okay? I just, uh, I just am not in the mood to be celebrating. Well, have fun. No, no, no. Uh, we can't have fun if you're miserable. It's... We'll, uh, be in the kitchen. Josh, what happened? Did something happen with Annie? Well, let's put it this way. You and Matt are going to make it to the starting gate. Annie and I are not, enough said. Oh, come on. You love Annie. She loves you. The, the children love her. Well, what could there's be there's been a lot of stuff, though, that's gotten in the way. And it's still there. I, uh... I would kind of like to get around it, and I think Annie would, too, but that's just impossible. So. It's not impossible. It isn't. If you love each other, it's not. <laughs> Sounds like a greeting card. Doesn't work like that in real life. She lied to me, Vanessa. Well, okay, but... I mean, I mean, she really, big time, lied to me over and over again, and she just uh, wants me to forget about it and forgive her, and I can't seem to bring myself to that place. I mean, you tell me. Answer me honestly. Do you think I'm being stubborn or judgmental in any way? I don't know. I don't know enough about it. I... But you know about me. You know me pretty well. All the stuff that Reva put me through with, with her and Billy and with my dad and with, with Alan Spaulding. Did she do this to me, Reva? Did she hurt me so much that I, I just cannot bring myself to forgive a lie? Only God knows your destiny, and he is the only one who cares. <laughs> I did not mean that the way it sounded. Oh, yes, you did. You're probably tired. We should go back. You don't want to overdo. No, 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 no. In, in a few minutes, I, I'm still a little uh, winded. Of course. You know, this, this place is really wonderful. I mean, it's so peaceful. Only the sound of the wind. I think of it as God whispering in my ear. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What is God saying? He gives me peace when I'm troubled. Now, what do you have to be troubled about? Oh, nothing much. I don't know who I am or where or what I've been. 
I run you down with my wagon, and then when that does not kill you, thank the good Lord, you wake up. And you tell me not only do you know me, but that you were married to me. And I don't remember a thing about it. Now, what person in their right mind wouldn't be troubled by that? It is not funny. It's a cosmic riot. I mean, you zoom off of a bridge, you land in the water and become some fisherman's catch of the day. Then you end up here in your bloomers. My undergarments are none of your business. Well, they used to be. If you do not stop this, I swear I'll... Ah, there's that Reva's famous temper again. You bring out the worst in people, Mr. Spaulding. And you bring out the best in me. You may not think that you are that woman that I remember, but you are. I already told you I'm not interested in anything you have to say. Oh, yes, you are. You wouldn't be Reva if you weren't, and you definitely are. You still have that wicked little gleam in your eye every time you get to someone, and you can still get to me. You can make me angry. You can make me laugh. You can make me glad I'm alive. I just wish you would allow me a chance to do the same for you. Okay, we need to get Miss Jacobs down to, uh, to x-ray, okay? Could you get an orderly for me? Yeah, certainly, okay, Doctor. Great. Please call me Jackie. Okay, Jackie, here's the deal, okay? For your poison ivy, I'm gonna give you a topical ointment, okay? Just apply it, it's gonna take care of your, uh, your burning and your itching, okay? And as far as your ankle's concerned, just keep it elevated. Apply an ice pack four times a day for the first 24 to 72 hours. And uh, other than that, just try to stay off it as much as possible, okay? Thanks, Dr. Bauer. Thanks or appreciated cash is preferred, okay? <laughs> Tom, just let me know when the uh, x-rays come up and we need a set of crutches, too, sure. okay? All right, we're all set. Can I'm I, just um, gonna have you back. Can I, can I keep you as my uh, personal doctor? So you can make sure I'm okay? Only if you let me touch your ankle again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you're so funny. Uh, you're a good audience, take care. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. All right. You get a number? You can get that at the desk, I think. No, I mean for a date. You can call me Jackie. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> she likes you, Rick. You're imagining things. And you're oblivious. Look, her itch is not something I want to scratch, if you know what I mean. Why not? She seems like a very nice person. No, she's... No offense to Jackie, but she's not my type. Okay. Just as long as you don't stay at home at the rest of your life. If I find a woman I like, I'll ask her out. Are you happy now? No, but that's beside the point. Rick. What? You are a attractive, funny, charming man. You deserve to have someone in your life. Someone very special. Who says you can't mix business and pleasure, huh? Not me. <laughs> Not anymore. No. Come on in. I want you to meet oh, some. Nice to meet you. Hi. <sighs> Hi. Hey, how come we don't have fun like this at WCBS? Bernie, behave yourself. Uh, I'm very sorry about this, Roger. I didn't realize that you had someone okay. in here. <laughs> no pun intended, I'm sure. <laughs> oh. Stop it. <laughs> We should probably come yeah. to play. Oh, no, 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 don't go, don't go. Stay, please, come on in. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Aren't you Dana Tyler from Channel 2 in New York? Yes. I just love your work. I think you're great. You have so much style. You know, Shelly, you could really pick up a few pointers from her. Sure, we could. Roger Thorpe. This is Dana and Bernie. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Pleasure. Oh. Pleasure. I've yeah. long been an admirer of your work. Thank, thank you. you. And I am really Dinah Thorpe. I am a major investor mm -hmm. in this station. Mm -hmm. Um, Dana and Bernie are in town on a story. Oh. Bernie, oh, you're Bernie Smilowitz. You do the weather, don't you? You know, I was thinking about going into that myself. Smilowitz, and I do sports. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. You're the funny one. I don't really care about sports, but you always make me laugh. I think I'm supposed to say thank you. <laughs> we both thought that Chili's program on women and violence was wonderful. I understand you're going to do a follow-up? Well, thank you. Yes, a series, hopefully, if I can get the budget worked well, out. Giving it a lot of thought. Well, don't bother, Chili. You and I have to talk. See, now that I'm Roger's wife, and as I said, a major investor in WSPR, I think I have to tell you that local programming has been a little too depressing. <laughs> like that call-in show you did with Lucy Cooper, I never even got on the air. And that snooze fest about the yellow snail darter, I mean, what was that all about? You gotta lighten up. Uh, people watch television to be entertained. I'm sure that Bernie and Dana would agree with me. I'll, I'll agree with you. <laughs> I knew I liked you. <laughs> people need to know what's going on in their world. 
Right, that's why they'd read Vanity Fair. Oh. Yes, I do see where you're coming from now. Good. Well, I have lots of ideas. I'd love to hear them, by the way. <laughs> well, okay, first off, I think that the newsroom needs more color. Mm -hmm. See, I envision a, a, a lime green anchor desk and, uh, and Jilly wearing a fuchsia suit. Uh, fuchsia does not look so good on television. No, no, no. I'm sure you can pull it off. But that, li but that lime green anchor desk is interesting. Oh, thank you. It is indeed. What do you think, Roger? Uh, well... I, I think that uh, Dinah's ideas are always welcome. I, I do, however, not so sure that we have enough money in the budget uh, for anything quite that radical if you want to see a good return on your investment. Oh, I guess I never thought of it that way. But how much can paint cost, really, Roger? Well... I, I think it's time for us to be pushing off now. All right. Uh, okay. So good good of you to stop by. Good to meet you. Bye. Pleasure. Nice meeting you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You think the Yanks are going to pull it off? They're going to do it. Don't worry. Right. Well. <laughs> Don't worry. I can control it. You better. Look, um, I'm tickled at, at the intense interest that you're showing uh, so early in the station, but uh, in the future, I'd prefer it if you would run your ideas by me first before you upset the staff. That I won't allow. Excuse me, did you say won't allow? Yes, as in forbid. Well, whatever. I'm not really all that interested in the station. I just want to make sure that my investment gets a substantial return. You'll get everything you got coming to you. And so will you. As a matter of fact, I'm off to buy a suit right now that's guaranteed to make you work harder. See okay. You. All right, partner. <laughs> Oh, boy. What was I thinking? Why are you pushing me to go on a date? I don't date my patients. Rick, well, you have to start somewhere. Oh, but I'm dumb. Rick, since I made a mess out of my own life, that doesn't mean that you have to make one out of your own. I don't plan on doing that. I don't. Y yes, you I, are. I have no personal life to mess up. Rick, that's my point. You gotta go out there and meet people. I don't have time. I'd love to, Annie, but I just don't have time. Right you know, when we were in Chicago and we were married, half the nurses were jealous of me. Only half, huh? <laughs> you know, and now I see all these nurses eyeing you. In case you forgot, Miss Dutton, Mrs. Bauer, we are still legally married. Have you forgotten that? Uh, well, then why don't you go to Mexico and get our divorce? Maybe your Mrs. Wright is out there. Mexico? Yes. I don't like my chances in Mexico. I try it. There is somebody out there that deserves you. You have to find her. Well, maybe you're right. You know, I'm a cute, potentially rich doctor. I've got curly hair. Naturally curly hair. Women do love that, don't they? I bet your dream girl is right under your nose. <laughs> Maybe you're right. The no! There's a problem with the gazebo. No! No, there's really not, as long as we don't mind sharing it with the protesters from the Save the Yellow Snail Darter. It's in danger of becoming extinct. Well, so am I. If Matt and Vanessa find out that the wedding's off. Look, Matt never gave up on me. Not once, and that's why we're getting married. Now, don't you give up on Annie. Well, how am I supposed to get past the lies, huh? Well, I don't know. How am I supposed to trust her again? Uh, well, you did with Reva. You managed with her. How did you do that? I guess I just, uh... I guess I just loved her through the pain. Loved her through the hurt. Well, there's your answer. Love Annie the same way. Josh. It is not me. It is this place that makes you feel alive again. No, 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 no. You're wrong. It is you. You're God's own creation, the very essence of woman. You're giving, you're caring, you're loving. To know you is to want you and need you. You make love with wild abandon. You're 
ist es zu. This has been Guiding Light. Jewelry provided by Robert Rose.